I have a beautiful energy attached to you that feels they manifested you into their life. This person, they did not mean, go with me here, they didn't mean to manifest you specifically. It wasn't your name, it wasn't your face. They were manifesting a soul mate, but even more than that, a soul tie, a, poten a, poten a potential divine counterpart, if you will. Taking it day by day, moment by moment, but somebody that they could really build off something with, not needing to know instantly right from the beginning that it's forever, not this unrealistic feeling, a, a true understanding of the blend of manifestation, of divine timing, and still going and getting what is yours, not allowing the beliefs of others' systems or how love is supposed to be or look or how it's supposed to enact stop you. Not let the echoes, the voices of the past lovers, partners stop you from seeing what's right in front of your face. Whoever's attached to you in this reading looks at you and says, you are everything I have ever asked for and more. Wow. This is beautiful. It's not even, an, it's not infatuation. It's, it's more than infatuation. It's more than admiration. Things sync up insanely with you and them. Things that you would never even know. Things you say or do or frequent and with the frequent, I think it's places you frequent. Interesting energy. I'll be able to decipher that more with the cards. No matter what, though, this feels prosperous. You're ready for a lover. Truly. You've let go of what no longer serves. You're completely in your control. You're completely in control of your law of attraction. Let's see what the cards got. We have two energies in this reading for sure. Other than you, there's two other sources. And it's going to give so much explanation to a connection that you really wanted for a while to form. And it's not that you don't want it to form anymore. I see somebody that's completely at peace with fate that they can see the game that this person would want to play. And the reason you feel me saying it that way is because the first person we're going to talk about is somebody you've either already been intimate with, you've gone on a couple of dates, You've talked for a couple of, like, for a good amount of time. And there's been a form of intimacy. I don't feel somebody that went into a full, uh, two things about it. One, you haven't gone into a full separation with this person, meaning you probably don't talk all the time. But there could be here or there messaging they're still being connected to each other's social media platforms, etc. But with that being said, there's also this energy of this specific person tied to you. You never really got into a full relationship with, or you could have been together a long time ago, broke up. And in recent times, you've found your way back into each other's lives, but have not gotten, did not get past certain hurdles of self-limiting beliefs to be back in a relationship again together, if that makes sense. These are collective. Take what resonates. When I feel everything, I say it. The second energy that we'll dive into after this is that, you know, in the beginning part of this reading where we were feeling that pre-workout and that there is this, this person that sees you as everything as they've ever desired and more and that they manifested you into their life, etc., that person is a different energy than who we're talking about right now. But it's imperative to digest this first, okay? 
Here's the thing about these two people that similar. They both feel like you are everything they have ever wanted and more. Physically, emotionally. I feel that this person attached to not your past, etc., but they were more part of your past than they are currently in your life. They're more part of your past. They have more impact in your past than impact they're having in your life currently. They, spirituality, etc., was something that they are very fresh and new to, something that they have been opening up to but still have a lot of questions you're a very spiritual source you 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 have clicked things together since you were very young and it just took time in the 3d world to catch up to what you already knew this person they feel that they completely missed a chance with you they feel they let their emotional immaturity jealousy get the best of them this person would try to make it so so poker face, so poker face with you. But they were almost in an obsessive energy when it came to you. Checking up on what you're doing, wondering who you're hanging out with, how do they think of me? A lot of overindulging thoughts of you. There was micromanaging as well from what I see. This person, they almost set impossible expectations for you to meet. I see you're a person that's very clear and upfront about what entails your life, your type of love, the uniqueness of being with you from the very beginning. And this person fills your soul's connection, okay? But the thing is, is they're, they're a jealous person. You have to be somebody who, even if you're an introverted person, your life makes you extroverted. You're very successful. People look at you in a high light and you get attention in many different forms. And that was extremely intimidating to them. Attractive and intimidating. The micromanaging where that's coming from, the, un, the impossible expectations of you is, it's like you could, it feels like posting one photo of you with another person or etc. could make this person spiral downwards and thinking they want nothing to do with me, they're over me, who is that, fuck them, like instant, like from like, being infatuated at looking at you and, and wanting to see you to the smallest thing happening and it being like, now I'm going to stop. But it's almost a cycle with them. And the thing is, they're very self-aware of this. I don't sense somebody that's malicious or like trying to play with you whatsoever. To be quite frank, this is a very good person. It is. I mean, you're, you're still attracted to them. You still see so much in this person, but you know yourself and you do not chase. You do not chase. There's been a ball like dropped in this person's court. And that's the thing. I feel like this person feels like they've, so they've been probably continuously watching your stories, um, interacting with things you're interacting with online, or if you... So these are collective text resonates if you guys frequent the same areas the gym work etc there being a sense of still being interactive in each other's lives but they feel that they left you in limbo too long with responding to an answer or really taking this to the next level they would go back and forth from i could compromise meaning being with this person aka you it's going to be a unique type of relationship there may be even a physical distance involved with you too so there would have to be a sense of being willing with a long distance dynamic where you still would see each other but it wouldn't be as often as if it was somebody that lived in your hometown it's a collective taste resonates but the overwhelmingness of this collective is this person's emotional immaturity 
stopping them from really even going down that the path of seeing what more could happen. They go back and forth with you. I'm telling you. There's things that, that and I'm in their head and they're like, they're saying there's things that you've done that have just hurt them. But I'm telling you, these things, they're not, it's not that it's irrational. It's not just because you, in this dynamic, whoever this person is, they, you never came to certain forms of commitment. You never sat down and were like, okay, we're going to make this official and this is going to be our healthy boundaries. They've never felt like up to this point powerful or strong enough to be vulnerable with you about their insecurities and fears. You know all of this internally. You're, you are picking up on it internally. I sense they want to speak. They want to speak to you so bad. But the reason they haven't responded to you or continue to like your stuff but aren't messaging you, etc. is that sense of emotional immaturity. Their soul knows they could meet you halfway, but the ego is blocking. And I feel that you have decided, I am flying away from this because... I'm ready to rise from the ashes. Do I like this person? Yes. Am I attracted to them? God, yes. Am I attracted to their soul? Yeah. Do I want more? Yeah. But I'm not going to chase. And I know that I could be happy with more than one person. And if they are meant to be with me, they will find their way back to me organically. Am I going to cut off a door? No. Am I going to Am I going to go ahead and block them or etc? No. I trust myself. I trust what I feel about you. And I trust that no matter if we end up together or not, I was destined to meet you and receive a spiritual download. Meeting you really changed my life. It upgraded it. There's still a spot. But when my train comes, I'm not missing this one. It's the type of energy I feel with you and this person. They deeply think they've messed up with you. That's a humongous reason that they have left you on red or... Again, they don't want to be a game to you. They, and they don't see you as a game. So a, a part of the self-insecurity could come from... Wondering if they can give you what you want as a family. You could have different, there could be a differences in like somebody wants children, somebody doesn't, or they feel that whatever you have is the cherishable thing. They want a happy home life. They had a set mindset on how that was supposed to look. And that's what being with you challenges all of that. When it comes to this specific connection. I do see two. I, I, I do see you meeting eye to eye. If this person can release this fear and this assumption based this is the only way it comes out so I'll understand what it means as I continue to say it assumption based problem solving so like stopping something before it even happens assuming okay I'm gonna get hurt by this person or assuming that person they posted a picture with is somebody that they're romantically involved with without actually having any proof or even talking to you about it for all they know you posted a picture with a family member that they had never seen before and took it and ran with it and it wasn't them that necessarily ran with it it was their anxiety their ego 
thing that's formed in childhood to protect you. The ego, it's the ego is not selfishness and cockiness and etc. That is uh, that is side effects of the ego. The ego simply wants to protect you, and what it doesn't know, it registers as danger. Is there still a possibility with this person? Yes, but it would take them bringing you the fire. It would take them bringing you the fire. You are in balance. You are in control of your law of attraction. And we have freedom of will. We know we have these connections. We know we have people that we can bring so much value to each other's lives. But if they're not willing to wiggle, you have to move forward and be grateful that you experienced them to begin with. Because I sense that you're not a very jealous person. And there's nothing, There's I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a person who is jealous. But it, it just shows so much about your self-love. You know what you bring to the table. You know other people can bring amazing things to the table. You are in competition with nobody but yourself. And it fucking shows to them, to the world. No matter who you end up with, you're having this home family life abundance. It's impossible to not heal around you. And remember that because the amount of power that there is within you. Like with this person, when it was just you two in front of each other, nothing else. It's fucking gravy. It was amazing. You couldn't even, you didn't even want to separate. You didn't even want to go home. But it was what, you know, it's like you end a date and you got to do it. You got to end a date some at some point. That was the energy it was with you too. It's only the separation and the what ifs that gets in the head of this person. I do see in your collective still faith, but definitely more uh, growth. Definitely them bringing you the offer, if you will. So with that being said and understanding, we are not destined to stay with any one specific person. We are destined to meet individuals. And we do have soul ties. We do have a divine. We do have these individuals that are much more than mundane relationships, okay? But you need to take comfort in knowing that you can be happy with more than one person. You really can. A lot of people get stuck with there's there's only one person that's ever going to make me fully happy. And if I don't have them, then my, my life will never be a full shell, if you will. It's not true. It's you. You are destined to meet certain people. And your freedom of will, left path, right path choices, dictate if they stay, they go, etc. What we can unpack now. Because we understand the only way that this person and you can have a future together is them becoming devoted to their own abundance and not letting their fears and what ifs and assumptions stop them from talking. There is a part of your story, no matter what, with this person that's not finished. So I don't sense you guys have had the last conversation of your life together. I don't sense... Something being closed, but I do see something definitely being bookmarked, okay? Let them bring you clarity from there. But now that we move on to this other energy, this person sees you as straight destiny and fate. This is a very spiritual person. This individual is highly successful, and quite a bit of people rely on them to make decisions, to have the final say. This person drives to I, I'm, I'm saying that this person has driven themselves into their highest timeline beaten all the odds whatever they were told growing up that they would or wouldn't be what they are allowed to to dress allowed to think allowed to a lot of things about wearing so this person must have been when they were a child like really secluded like they were not allowed to really be themselves so like the barriers that they overcame to become a leader now and be authentically themselves. 
you two unpack your stories together and you're going to be in, in awe of each other of what both of you have been through. This individual is very confident in themselves. They know what they bring to the table. Do they still have insecurities? Yeah. Do they still have what ifs? Yeah, but there's something about their energy keeping themselves in check. This person sees you as extremely charming and devoted to your purpose, your craft, your reason, your job, etc., your project. They are attracted to your outwardly body, but your ability to like well, one thing, one of the first things they ever noticed about you is your ability to multitask is what I'm hearing. That you thrive in controlled chaos, if you will. That you bring value wherever you go and you deeply value people. People can feel that you want other people to value themselves. It's so simple, but something so fucking strong. They know your story is far from over. They don't know exactly how you feel about them, is what I'm hearing with this. Because th again, you two are very spiritual people and this feels more like somebody you could have met through work. So maybe you met them if you're somebody that works in an office, you were, you were at a business dinner or you transferred to a new place or you went to, be to get trained somewhere out of state take it as it resonates because these are collective but it feels a professional environment is how you met this person so there's even that's even more where there's like that professionalism line that can't be crossed this is an admirer this person you have a deep attraction to as well Wow, okay, so these cards are going to be all about this. Furthering the reading on. Wow, this is a very powerful reading. So what more about this connection does Spirit have for you right now? I said hold those two for the end. Okay. Getting the download. This connection is more than a reflection. This is somebody who has definitely indulged in their shadow work. I don't know if y'all see that. That was a moth. I don't know if you saw that, but I have a couple of moths that like to stay with me. So it was pretty cool that he popped out. Um, this connection is going to organically flow into more. I see spirit putting you two in a predicament, if you will, not like a bad predicament, an area, a time, an ability to where it would be appropriate to be able to tell each other how you feel. It's going to take time because you have a lot of other moving parts and the business or the partnership the job, the project is of the utmost importance right now when it comes to what you two are doing in each other's lives. You, ha you both have an unspoken understanding of what's going on. You look at each other. There's a telepathic connection that there's more. But both of you are so like, I am not... This is such a... You're both like, this is such a healthy, dynamic friend, coworker. Or just like you're in such a place of your life that's taking you so long to really feed out who doesn't serve. You don't want to do, neither of you want to do anything to jeopardize the stability. You don't want to crash into each other. I sense keeping this connection to yourself in a sense for a while. Other people... Their cries, their thoughts, their actions, their feelings. When you 
allow somebody to know what's going on in your personal life right in the beginning of when things are being formed they have the ability to affect it they do that's why i always suggest you less than less than five people should know the in and outs of your life of course we all have you know we all have a lot more than five people in the span of our whole life that we want to know what's going on in our going on you know intimate things family etc what i'm talking about though is your deepest desires manifestations personal connections when everything's in a formative state you don't want many people's energy in that except yours and your truly devoted individuals with that being said, if you are to need advice or etc. about this connection, seek only one to two people to know about this and make sure they're people who are your ride or dies, your cheerleaders. I'm not saying to throw any fear into what we're talking about. The tenacity, the intensity, you feel me saying this is because of how imperative it is that you maintain this telepathic connection and let the spoken part come as it should. This person does not want to fly away from your connection. <laughs> I'm telling you that the they're hoping that the future between you two ends up in intimacy. I do sense you two being able to face this reality together of there's something more at a dinner. These are collective tastes that resonate. Some of you go to dinner frequently with this person because of the fact that you're in a business partnership or that your works. It, it, there is this for some of you here this is energy where it's like well it's pretty common for what we do that we end up going having lunches or dinners together this feels intimate this feels like you and this person almost selecting and picking a time to only see each other during this dinner you're going to be able to there's going to be a moment, there's going to be an ability for both of you to take that mask off and face what's, it's not face what's going on, but like front face feel like, yeah, I've needed to really understand the value you bring to my life far more than a romantic thing before I was even willing to dive into this. I needed to see that we could work together platonically. I mean, it, it spirit put us in the position to fly together, to drive this force, to spread our, our message. I needed to make sure I, I needed to make sure far even beyond that, that I wasn't just infatuated with you and your beauty, your handsomeness, etc. Take it as it resonates. And every time I see you, I fall more and more for you. I asked spirit to manifest my divine or my soul tie, that next potential person, the lover, somebody who, you know what, if they're here for a moment or here forever, awesome. I don't care at this point. I just am ready for that next beginning and let it all form from there. And you were presented in their life. So it's mutual, and both of you are still releasing. It's not, I don't even say releasing fear. You both of you are just still learning how to keep. You know how it is. It's when you start your spiritual awakening, and when you're continuing it, because both of you are far into your spiritual awakening. There's still always more to learn and to harness, but you're you're both pretty you're you're pretty far into it. Going back and forth from that to remembering the 3D existence and having to wake up and take care of bills and, and go to a job and, and everything. You both are very much... The 
And you're hearing you're hearing this pause right now because I feel this. You're both touching. I'll flip these cards. We'll further understand. You guys are further touching in the astral realm all the time. I'm seeing you two in a room with your hands over each other. Release de deeply both releasing poster syndrome about am I dreaming? Am I in an aha? Am I in a la la land? Okay, so you're both just releasing imposter syndrome. That's what this is telling me. Your hands are not tied. Spirit's making sure this happens with divine timing. No matter what happens with the other person in this reading, this feels like something that's lucrative financially, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. This person has their arms open to you. And I feel... Throughout more time, spirit's literally going to make an exact time position that you're able to intimately be alone and appropriately talk about, is there another part of our life we're supposed to sell forward with with each other, even more than business or friendship or... A momentary existence, if you will. That's what I got for y'all today. Now we're going to talk about Twitch. Over on Twitch at Uncle Bronze Official, every single stream, I give away a tarot reading for free. All you must do is simply be following me on Twitch and you watch the active live stream. Every live stream, I put a keyword on my screen that you type into the chat and that's how I automatically add you into the giveaway. Make sure that you have your whispers open to receiving messages on Twitch. And in case you're not aware of what that means, a whisper is a, is a message. It's your inbox. You have to go into your settings and set it to where somebody who's not following you is able to message you. That's because if you don't do that, then it will be blocked and I won't be able to message you if you win. So, Twitch, Uncle Bond's official. Follow. Watch active live stream and make sure your whispers are open. You can go into your settings and change it from there. Lastly, but not leastly, we're going to talk about the spiritual Colorado adventure. All the spots have been taken. You can still put yourself on the list for, or you can still put yourself on the waiting list in case any other spots are added. You can go to any of my social media platforms, my website, and you will see the link there to the uh, trip. I'm very excited. I'm so grateful for everything that this trip is gonna is gonna bring. And we're gonna talk about one more thing, which is my Patreon. Over on Patreon at Uncle Bronze, I have seven tier levels. Tier level one and down all receive two extra videos every single week which is Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine Energy forecast. So what's going to be brought to you throughout the week, what energy you're giving to the, to the to world that week. It's a guidance. It's a forecast, if you will. From there up, there are a lot of added benefits. Tier 3 through 7 are eligible for the video chat reading giveaway. Two people every single month get picked for the video chat reading giveaway. That is one hour long, one topic of your choosing. So it would be either love, spiritual, like like love or life guidance or finance slash career guidance. And that is valued at $388.88. Every month I give two of those away. Then from there, again, a lot of added benefits, but we're going to scroll a little bit to tier seven to talk about it. Tier 7 is my tarot teachings. Those are my students. They learn how to further indulge, understand, interpret tarot. Every week, I give out a uh, tarot teaching lesson. And there's a big playlist 
that is loaded full of already made lessons. A new one comes out every week. You are able to digest and watch these videos at your leisure. And there's always an added one every week. We dive into different card interpretations, explaining every how every card has a companion card, how to utilize other divination tools alongside tarot, how to make spreads, and so much more. If you're feeling called to join the Patreon, I highly suggest you go over there and look at all the available tier levels. And if you're wanting to even step up from being one of my tarot students, that's the apprenticeship program. My apprenticeship program is if you want everything you can possibly get out of learning from me, my apprenticeship program is where you want to be. We dive into multiple different topics, spiritual alchemy, inner teenager slash inner child work, uh, manifestation techniques, all forms of divination, and so much more. The apprenticeship program, that is available on my website. If you go to my services tab and you scroll all the way down, you will see there a brief understandance of the apprenticeship program. There is an interview process with becoming my apprentice. There's no interview process for being a tarot student. So, if you are interested in scheduling an interview with me to be an apprentice, go to my website, offprintmint.com. You can go ahead and send me a message and we will go from there. You let me know that you're wanting to schedule an appointment or you're wanting to schedule an interview and we'll go from there. That's what I got for y'all today. I'll see you when I see you. Let's get it.